If you're taking antidepressants, there is a chance you can drink ayahuasca, but it has to be under certain conditions. Watch this video to understand a little bit better about how plant medicine and this modern form of medicine interact. So, first of all, a big disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. I'm speaking from empirical evidence, experience, meaning people that I know that have drunk ayahuasca, people that were on antidepressants and drunk ayahuasca, people that came to a retreat center and had a positive result, a positive experience, and also some people that have gone to some other retreat centers and have had a very difficult one after drinking medicine. First of all, let's look at this. Modern medicine today and modern doctors are very, very quick to prescribe medication and pharmaceuticals without going deep into whether that person actually needs them or not. To give you an example, when I first met my wife, she was having these waves of, of emotion. She was having strong moods, strong emotions. Some days she was very happy. Some days she was very sad. Some days she felt very anxious. Some days she felt very depressed. And then she felt happy again. And she had a psychologist back then that she hired because she wanted to feel more grounded, more stable. Now she opened up to her psychologist in one of their first sessions and she told her, she said, I feel so unstable sometimes. I don't know what to do. And her psychologist, without inquiring a lot about how are you eating, how are you sleeping, what about your past, how's your heart, how are you feeling, without looking into these different variables, she said, oh, you have bipolar disorder. I'm going to refer you to a psychiatrist and they will give you medication so you can feel stable. I remember very clearly the day that my wife came to me crying, saying, I have to book an appointment with a psychiatrist because I think I have bipolar disorder. My psychologist just told me this. And we had just started dating and I asked her, okay, how many sessions have you had? Uh, it's our second, third session. What work have you done together? Has she, has she tried to help you become grounded and stable on your own account? No, not really. Okay. What other advice has she given you? <laughs> and this is where I understood that this was, this was nuts. Um, my wife wanted to quit eating sugars because she was eating too, much, too many sweets, too much candy. And she came to the psychologist and the psychologist said, make a list of 100 things that you really dislike doing. Make a list of 100 things that you really, really don't want to do. And then next time that you feel a sugar craving, just grab the list and do something from that list. <laughs> and I thought, if it only was that simple to just, just don't feel compulsive, just don't feel addicted, just do something else, the world would be a much better place. And I understood that her psychologist was probably following whether she was taught through textbooks, but that she was also very, very quick and irresponsible in, in telling my wife that she had a condition, a very severe one for which people suffer and spend their whole life addicted to medication and sedated. And I told my wife, like, just hold on, let's give this a shot. Let's spend the next few months, let's get our diet in order, let's work out, let's spend time in nature, let's go and drink ayahuasca. If after that you still feel very unstable, Maybe you can go some to some place where you trust people are professional and get a second a second thought. But antidepressants and medication and a lot of the job and the work that psychiatrists do. And I'm not saying in every single location there are exceptions to the rule, but every person that I have seen that has been medicated was medicated wrongly. I had family members. I have a very young cousin that she was medicated since her late teens and through her 20s. She was on antidepressants. And when I talked with her, she said, I just, life feels just kind of heavy. It feels kind of overwhelming, just feels great. I just 
you know, I don't feel bad, but I also don't feel very good. I just don't, I don't feel much. And she was starting to become suicidal. And my uncle and my aunt noticed that. And one time during a, a family reunion, they shared that they were worried about her. And I told, I messaged her, I said, hey, I want to invite you to an ayahuasca ceremony. And I paid for it and, and she went there. And she ended up coming a few times. And she went from being this depressed young girl that was on the edge of suicide and who used to drink a lot and take drugs and try to find extreme ways of feeling, always wearing black and feeling kind of heavy and depressed or just very numb to the last time that I saw her back in Colombia. She was wearing colors. She had uh, adopted her, adopted a dog. She had moved in with a new boyfriend that she had met, got in a new job. She was doing very well. She was happy. She was radiant. She wasn't drinking or partying the way she used to. She was excited about life. And she can pinpoint that and bring that back to the work that she did with ayahuasca. In my wife's case, the same thing happened. We drank some plant medicine, we organized her diet, we started doing yoga, and suddenly she started seeing that her fluctuating moods, her depression, was connected to not doing anything that was meaningful for her. She had lived working a job that she hated. Her depression was also around avoiding feeling. She was avoiding the pain she felt towards her father, towards her mother, towards her ex-boyfriends. She was avoiding to feel the intensity of the grief that as a child she had repressed. And then her psychologist tells her that she needs to be medicated, that she needs to be put on antidepressants or anti-bipolar um, medication. Most of the time, what these pills do is they brush under the carpet what's in there. It's not that they make you feel better. And this has been, like, there's statistics about this. I don't remember the exact numbers, but a vast percentage of people who are on antidepressants end up having to increase their dosage a few years down the line and feeling worse than they, when they first started. But now they have a combined addiction to the antidepressants. And when they try to get off them, they have these panic attacks and these extreme reactions. So this happens because antidepressants will will numb you, they will disconnect you from your emotions, from your life force, they will make things more still, which for some people may be useful if they really have a mental health problem that is very extreme, which is rarely the case. Often the case is that the person needs to feel their emotions, they need to be allowed to experience what they're going through in a safe place, they need to be held and guided through their pain, not disconnected forcefully from it. So if you're taking antidepressants and you're considering to come and drink ayahuasca, if it's with us, you can send us a message. If you're going some other place, let your shaman, your medicine community or medicine house know because they can counteract drastically in a negative way with ayahuasca because ayahuasca brings you deeper into your truth, into what's present within you. It makes it more alive. Whereas antidepressants, they suppress it. So you end up with something that is pulling in this direction and something that is pulling on the other. And I, I may be mistaken, but I believe this can lead to serotonin syndrome and one thing is working to inhibit serotonin, the other thing is working to push it forward and it can create chaos in your biochemistry where you can actually end up injured or in a worse mental health state. However, there are ways in which you can reduce the medication and maybe keep it to a minimum so that you don't have extreme panic attacks and you can work in a gentle way with the shaman. A little bit of medicine can be given to you to see how you react. And from there, you can gradually come out of the medication, do your work to heal what was at the root of the problem to begin with, and eventually ditch the antidepressants completely. I hope this was useful. And I hope that if you are on antidepressants, you understand that the way forward is true. You cannot brush the dirt under the carpet, pop some pills and pretend that you're going to have a good life. That's not how life works. You have to look at it. But in the looking at it, you grow, you become wise. You forgive yourself, you forgive your past, and you have the chance to live 
a new beautiful future. Thank you for watching this. Please like and subscribe. And if you want to come to Colombia and drink medicine with us in a safe setting and recover from anxiety, depression, or a lot of emotional, mental, and physical pain, send us a message. Check out the description. I hope to see you soon.